evening, everybody. Let's grab a hymn book. We'll stand together. We're going to start with number 216. 216, Dwelling in Beulah Land. We'll sing all four verses. 216 hymn books there underneath your seat. If you need one, number 216. 216. Far away the noise of strife upon my ear is falling. Then I know the sins of earth be set on every hand. Doubt and fear and things of earth in vain to me are calling. None of these shall move me from Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky. I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply. For I am dwelling in Beulah land, far below the storm of doubt. The world is beating. Signs of men in battle along the enemy withstand. Safe am I within the castle of God's word retreating. Nothing then can reach me. Tis Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain. Underneath the cloudless sky, I'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry. Oh, yes, I'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply, for I am dwelling in Beulah land. Let the stormy breezes blow, their cry cannot alarm me. I am safely sheltered here, protected by God's hand. Here the sun is always shining, here there's not can harm me. I am safe forever in Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky i'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry oh yes i am feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply for i am dwelling in beulah land viewing here the works of god i sing in contemplation his blessed voice, I see the way he planned. Dwelling in the Spirit here, I learn a full salvation. Gladly will I tarry in Beulah land. I'm living on the mountain underneath the cloudless sky i'm drinking at the fountain that never shall run dry oh yes i'm feasting on the manna from a bountiful supply for i am dwelling in beulah land amen good singing welcome to church welcome back on a sunday night no better place to be than in church on a Sunday night. So glad you're with us tonight. Let's go ahead and go, Lord, in prayer and uh, ask God's blessings upon the service here tonight. Brother Mike Baca, would you please leave your throne of grace? We'll get started tonight. Remain standing, please. 324, 324. Take the name of Jesus with you. 324, all four verses. 324. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. 
take it then wherever you go precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven take the name of jesus with her as a shield from every snare if temptations round you gather breathe that holy name in prayer precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven Oh, the precious name of Jesus, how it thrills our souls with joy. When his loving arms receive us and our songs and tongues employ, precious name, oh, how sweet. Grip of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. At the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet. King of kings in heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven precious name oh how sweet hope of earth and joy of heaven amen good saying you can be seated did anybody uh we have bulletins and if anybody would like to have one we have some if anybody didn't get one but like to have one please let us know the ushers have some back there if not uh that's okay but if you need one let us know all right thank you if you want to open those up we have some upcoming events want to remind everybody of of course we had the first one we're going to look at tonight, I'm thankful to have Pastor Di preaching uh, the evening service here tonight. And I know there are some here just for that purpose. We're thankful uh, for you to be here this evening. And we'll, we'll update. This is going to be hard for me to do, but we'll update uh, the competition right now here in just a moment. And we'll see who's ahead uh, as that goes on. But don't forget, this Saturday, uh, we need help out soul winning and bus calling. Thank God for the good attendance today. And this, uh, in case you haven't noticed, and I know you have noticed, but the, the con competition, the campaign, whatever we're calling it, is working. Um, as of this morning, we've in the last three weeks, we've had 25 visitors in our church. So praise the Lord for that. We're very excited. And we're not done yet. We have four more visitors tonight. So we're thankful for that. By the way, these kind of things, that's why we do competitions and contests, campaigns, whatever you want to call them, uh, is is for the it's, it is fun i don't know if you noticed it or not but it is a fun joyful thing but the whole idea is to get people get the gospel out to people while we're soul winning but also to bring more people in church jesus said let's compel them to come that my house may be filled so the whole idea behind it is that so thank you for working hard that way you know our joy to have pastor die <clears throat> i want to <clears throat> if i feel like i'm talking fast tonight because i want to give him as much time as he needs so i don't want to uh, slow down too much so keep that in mind next pray for brian next sunday night brian be preaching during the evening service. We'll be in prayer for him. And then the following Friday, or that Friday, not this Friday, the next Friday, October 15, starts our fall revival. So fr Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock, we'll have uh, the revival meeting, and then all day on Sunday, a revival meeting as well. So be in prayer for Pastor McKeon as he travels out from North Carolina, uh, that God would speak through him to us. And he's also, I may have already mentioned this, but he's bringing another uh, young preacher with him who feels like he's been called to the West. Uh, perhaps come out and start a church somewhere. So pray for him as he's seeking God's will in his life. We'll get to meet him during uh, the revival meeting. And then uh, I'm glad, as I mentioned this morning, my wife took care of me again, as she always does. I thought we didn't have the sign-up sheet for the potluck, but it was out there, and a lot of people signed up. I'm thankful for it. If you have not yet signed up, please sign up uh, for the potluck. And then the next time I see Brother Gerald, I'm going to have to uh, whoop him or something because earlier Brother Goddessman came up and said, your favorite food is on the, is signed, I'm thinking banana pudding. He said, no, instant mashed potatoes. So I had to go look and see, and it says Gerald Modis, and then it says instant mashed potatoes. So when you see him, let him know I'm looking for him. And I know he did it on purpose, 
because he's ornery. And I don't know why anybody would pick on me, but I'm glad for Brother Gerald. I owe him one. Uh, I love the spirit like that, so keep it up. Don't, the potluck, if you haven't signed up, please sign up uh, for that. I'm always nervous. Every potluck, I'm always nervous that we'll never have enough. And then we always have so much left over. So please keep that going. Then we'll have a lot left over. We can send that home uh, with folks. Don't forget, <clears throat> please take some more door hangers and get those handed out uh, for the next couple of weeks so we can see God do a great thing in our church through this fall campaign. Speaking of the fall campaign, um, this morning uh, when we left church, or this afternoon I guess it was, the American Cowboys had 13 and the Dallas Cowboys had 12. And praise the Lord for that. Now, here's the thing. I noticed uh, earlier tonight, right as we were getting ready to come in, I noticed uh, this young man and his wife sitting beside the dice. I figured they must know the dice real well. There is a resemblance a little bit there. But the dice said, yes, yeah, my son. And daughter-in-law said, praise the Lord for that. And I thought, wait a minute. That means, brother, Miss Die, even though I know Miss Die is a diehard Broncos fan. I, I know that. But we still had to have them on the Dallas Cowboys just to make the uh, kind of even. And I said, oh, man, you guys are going to have to go for the Dallas Cowboys. And he said, no, don't count us for the Dallas Cowboys. My kind of guy. Praise the Lord for that. But here's the thing. We have to stick with the rules. Rules are meant for a reason. I don't like it. And I wanted to bend the rules this morning, and you guys wouldn't let me, so I'm not bending the rules now. So there's two more. And then Pastor Die, the young ladies that are behind there, are they here uh, with you as well daughter, and her daughter and her, okay so there's four that's hard to say there's four more for the Dallas Cowboys so that gets them to 16 and the American Cowboys at 13 we're now and I'm, I'm having fun with this but in all seriousness we're so glad y'all are here with us tonight we're very thankful for that uh, but that just means American Cowboys we got to pick it up this week hey, amen we don't we don't want to uh, fall any farther behind Dallas Cowboys you guys have worked hard enough you've done your job and rest at 16 it's a good good round number perfect but American Cowboys let's get to work and get some more people in I'm glad to be here tonight and looking forward to it one more thing before we sing a song take up an offering on a serious note I ask you ask prayer uh, for my mother-in-law and her family her uh, brother and sister that her they this last week they found her youngest sister found her uh, un unconscious unresponsive she had passed away so be in prayer just in her 50s is that correct in her 53, uh, an unexpected deal. And so just pray for the family, if you would, as now they're, uh, and as I told my mother-in-law this morning, I'm so glad to see you, but not under these circumstances. That's the reason she came back from Colorado, is to help take care of the arrangements and things like that. So be in prayer for the um, Cardenas family, if you would, please, that God would just touch them through this time uh, and give them strength uh, through this. So pray for that uh, this week, if you would. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a song in uh, number 180. <clears throat> we'll sing 180, God will take care of you. And after the last verse, we'll ask our ushers to come take up the evening offering, number 180. 180 right before the evening offering. Let's stand 180. Be not dismayed, whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Through days of toil, when heart doth fail, God will take care of you. When dangers fear your paths assail, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. All you may need, He will provide. God will take care of you. Nothing you ask will be denied. God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. 
No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon his breast, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day or all the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. Amen. Great singing. Let's pray together for our evening offering. Excuse me. Brother Richard, would you please pray for our offering this evening? Amen. You may be seated. Let's stand together as the girls are finishing up here. 463, 463, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Sing it out if you will be there. 463, all three verses before the message. 463. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called 
called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Come up now, and he needs really no introduction. Everybody here knows the dies. We're so thankful for them. But as he comes up, I want to publicly say how much my wife and I have enjoyed having the dies, and they have been such a help to us. It is not they haven't pulled us aside and said, "Now listen here, here's what you can do." But so many things they've done for the years they've been here as members of our church, and we're so thankful for them. And I'm enjoying having the split Sunday school class, and I may try and get more of that because he's only I mean, he's still a young man. Has a lot of teaching and preaching left in it. And looking forward to what God has for us tonight. Pastor, I hear this. Take what time you need. It was like you literally died. Only for all Thank you. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's word he has given. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be, must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. In heaven no drooping nor pining, no wishing for elsewhere to be. God's light is forever there shining, how beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be, must be, sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. Pure waters of life there are flowing, and all who will drink may be free. Rare jewels of splendor are glowing, how beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be, must be, sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be. The angels so sweetly are singing up there by the beautiful sea. Sweet chords from their gold harps are bringing, how beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be, must be, sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary, how beautiful heaven must be, how beautiful heaven must be. Thank you, it's good to see you all. I had some folks tell me they were going to come and listen to me preach. I called a family or I texted a family that got saved under my ministry when I was pastor in this church. And they told me, text me back and said, they're here, we're gonna come, but I don't see them. But I thank God that my son and my daughter all came. They always are a blessing to me. And then my daughter, Jolene and Marcella, uh, my daughter's friend, long time friend, and she's our friend too, they came. So I got somebody, my wife got them to come, really. <laughs> but uh, what's going on? There's this thing blowing up? <laughs> Not to worry about it, huh? Take your Bibles, please. I trust you have your Bible. 
I read my Bible every week by the grace of God. I read it and I study it. Is that doing that because of this thing? Okay, I just wanted to say, turn to John chapter 21. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'll tell you what page in just a minute. Page 1144 if you got the right Bible. <laughs> I want to read verse 1 and verse number 14, and then we'll go through the chapter I trust. That's what I want to do. Uh, John chapter 21, verse 1. And after these things, the things it's talking about in the previous chapter talks about two of Jesus' appearances. And that's what, after these things, what's more important than Jesus appearing? What's more important than his coming. Right. He's coming back. Amen. It says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. And then look at verse number 14. Now this is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. I want to speak tonight when Jesus shows up. Amen. I want to speak of when Jesus shows up. Amen. I could tell you story after story how Jesus showed up in my life. Yeah, yeah. He showed up one night and saved my soul. Well, yeah. Not only saved my soul, he saved my life as he let me preach. Yeah. I didn't remember having a call to preach, but I started preaching as soon as I got saved. Yeah. I preached in the business places where I worked, etc., and so on. But Jesus has showed up in my life many, many times. Yeah. Now this word showed up means he manifests himself. He makes himself known. Yeah. Jesus wants to manifest himself to you. He wants to make himself known to you. There's no friend like Jesus. There's no savior but Jesus. He is my friend and he has manifested himself to me through the years in many ways. It also means he's a shining light. He manifests a shining light. Jesus is the light of the world. <laughs> he manifests the light, you know. So uh, I thank God for that. That means to render apparent. He makes himself appear. He's apparent. You can see him. Uh, he made himself manifest here, and they can see him. Someday I'm going to see Jesus. Yes. Maybe sooner than I think with my age slipping by and things that are happening. But it means to render is apparent, render himself apparent, to light and to shine. It means to appear, to declare. It's actually a public appearance so there'll be no more concealment. Yeah. There's a day coming when Jesus is going to publicly appear and there'll be no more concealment. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that day to see Jesus. I've lived some 60 years. I've been saved. I've tried to live for Jesus. I've failed many times, but he always was there. You know how I prove my life, my love to my wife? I shall never leave her nor forsake her. That's the way I prove my love to her. That's the way Jesus proves his love to us. So uh, I want to speak when Jesus shows up and I feel a little intimidated or a little, uh, you know, uh, out of place because I haven't been preaching, but I feel comfortable in this pulpit. Amen. I believe the pulpit's the test of the man of God. I believe it is. How we teach, how we preach, right. how we move people, how people get saved. I believe the pulpit is a test of my love to Jesus tonight. Right. I believe it's the test of the pastor to the uh, uh, people and to God. The pulpit is a test place. It really is. You know, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, a little girl was drawing a picture on a piece of paper on the floor. Her mother said, honey, what are you drawing? She said, a picture of God. Her mother said, honey, nobody's ever seen God. The little girl said, when I'm finished, they will. <laughs> so I thank God for a, a wonderful relationship. Here's an outline for this chapter for Brother Luton, for those that want an outline. The outline is fish, food, and fondness. Three S. Fish, food, and fondness. See, that's a good topic for a Baptist, amen. <laughs> So, listen, when, what happens when Jesus shows up? Number one, fishing will pick up. 
Fishing will pick up. Look at verse 6. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Listen, when Jesus shows up, yes. fishing will pick up. Amen. It will pick up right. when Jesus shows up. If Jesus shows up in your life, you'll catch some fish for him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He'll help you catch fish. Amen. Yeah. I was raised on a willow along the river bank of the Norwood River in Wyoming, flowing into the Bighorn. I would go cut me a willow and I'd make a little notch on it. And I had a, a grocery store man who collected the strings off of his bread boxes. He had a ball of string about that big and I'd go borrow string from him and I'd make me a fishing hole. Amen. So uh, that's the way I started out. But anyway, they caught nothing all night. When Jesus showed up, they caught 153 fish. Who counted them? Right. Yeah, I think Jesus knew how many was there. Amen. He knows how many fish you've caught. If you've caught any fish, he knows that if you haven't caught any, he knows the number of fish you've caught. So I'm saying so. So winning is the life of the church, I believe. Now, I've been so winning ever since I got saved. I wrote down how long I've been preaching. I've been preaching 55 years and in pulpits, in churches. But I've been preaching a lot longer time because I preached in the store that I worked in in Safeway. I preached in the uh, store at uh, another place that I worked on. I started preaching right away. I mean, I was kind of forced to it, I thought, because they started cursing and swearing and, and using dirty jokes. And I would just tell them, hey, you guys get saved and you won't talk that way. Amen. And so I'm saying, listen, Jesus said that so many is the life of the church. Jesus taught his men. He taught his men to be fishers. Fishers of men. Fishers of men. I believe that if you follow Jesus, he said, I will make you fishers of men. He'll make you fishers of men. I'm saying, listen, in Matthew 4, 19, it won't have you turn there, it says, he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Now that's the first time he saw Peter and Andrew. He's already named Peter Cephas, changed his name from Simon Peter to Cephas of Stone. But now he sees them along the shore of the Lake of Galilee. And by the way, this Tiberius Lake here is the Sea of Galilee. They changed the name there when the Roman soldiers did. They came up there and built a city there. But follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Now what's this make mean? It means he'll make you a performer. A performer. Yeah. I can lead a soul to Christ. I just don't go out and hunt for him enough. I don't get my pole out enough. But I can lead a soul to Christ in the last two months. I've led three to the Lord. I got two of them to come to church here one Sunday. Yeah. The only mistake I made was I should have saw if they got baptized. I should have talked to them here. Usually I like to baptize them immediately. That's what I do. I believe that's the way Jesus did, see? But anyway, I'm saying he'll make you a fisherman, performer, habitually. Did you know habitually Jesus wants you to win souls? He does. That's what I'm saying. I'll make you. I'll make you. It also means to execute. Make will execute it so we can have fish. Have fish. Amen? Amen. I'm saying, listen, he'll make us accomplish it. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to take you fishing. I'm going to tell you three fish stories. Okay, the first one is I'm going down a block in Del Norte, Colorado. There's a real nice, fancy mansion like house. Right behind it's a big Methodist church, a big brick, nice Methodist church. I knock on the door. There's a deacon with me from the church. An elderly lady comes to the door. She's about 90 years old. And I tell her who I am, where I'm from, what church I'm from. I told her I thought I'd stop and visit her. That old lady was lonely. She lived all alone. I found out she was lonely. But that night, I asked her the question, if you died, would you go to heaven? That night, she said she didn't know. She said, I belong to the big fancy church right behind me. It happened to be a Methodist church. Boy, she had a mint, an old car in mint shape in a garage that was built on attached to her house. And she had pictures of covered wagons. She told me, I came to the San Luis Valley in no covered wagons when I was a little girl. My dad owned the water rights to the headwater of Rio Grande. South Fork and North Fork fold together. They make the Rio Grande up there in the San Luis Valley. She said, I owned the 
water rights to those two streams at one time. But I asked her if she would to be saved. I asked her if she was saved. She didn't know. I said, would you like to know? She told me yes. I led her to the Lord. Now, I didn't know that she had a knee problem. She had water on her. Water would come on her knees, and she'd have to go and have them drained about every week or every other week. And so I said, will you get down and kneel with me? And she said, I don't know that I can. But she got down on them knees and bothered her and asked Jesus to save yeah. her. And I explained to her that she needed to come to church and make confession. Next Sunday, she came walking up. We had a flight of steps up to the church. She came walking, came in the church, and made profession of faith in Jesus Christ. That was a fish story. That was a real one. That happened. My wife can verify that. But let me take you to another fish story. I have a little book called Soul Winning by Dr. Jack Kyles. And he tells his soul winning experiences. One time on a Thursday night, he sent a couple of his men out to visit a fellow that had been in the church the Sunday before. They went to the door and knocked on the door, and a fellow said, he told, they told the fellow they were from First Baptist Church, and a, a pastor of Jack House, and the fellow said, you get out of my yard, you go over there and tell Dr. Jack House, if he ever comes over here or sends somebody over here, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> this is an actual thing that happened to him. He went back to the church, he told they told Dr. House that this guy said he'll kill you. Dr. House went down, got in his car, and drove to that guy's house and knocked on the door. The guy came to the door and said, I'm here for you to kill me. And he won that man to Jesus Christ. Amen. What boldness. What boldness. Now, I've been threatened to be killed myself. But I won't tell you about that one right now. And one more story. There was a couple by the name of Jack and Marie Postaway. They lived near that church. They lived in a place called Seven Mile Plaza. Actually, it was a trailer park, a trailer park for trailers. And my wife and I prayed one time, two days. We were going to pray three days, but we didn't make it. We, we prayed two, and that was all we could make it. I'm a fast. We fasted two days. And that, the next, well, that weekend, I think on Thursday or Friday, I went to that trailer court. A lot of people were home, but I passed tracks on F tracks on every door. Sunday, this car drove up, a nice looking car. A family got out and came in. I was Jack Marie Post. I was preaching on the new birth. I had a sermon prepared. I preached on the new birth. I said, Is there anybody here who wants to be saved? Raise your hand. Point it toward heaven if you want to be saved. They all raised their hand. But they didn't come up, so I walked down and said, These folks want to be saved. You raised your hand. They came up, and they all got saved. Jack and Marie post away. That's some children. A fishing trip, amen? Yes. A fishing trip just because I passed out a track. Right. Just because there was someone that was looking for help. Looking for answers to life. I believe there's people out here that's looking for answers to life. We need to go and find them. So that's my fish stories for today. I don't know about you, but I like fish. Yeah. I like help. Yeah. Now, I, you used to buy it over here, but anymore it's so expensive where they don't get it shipped in or something happens, you can't hardly get a helmet. Yeah. So I buy salmon. Yeah. I buy salmon. I like salmon. My wife fixes it and I take some lemon and put on it and fix it up and eat uh, salmon. I mean, how many like salmon? <laughs> Everybody likes salmon. That's good. All right. well, let me tell you a salmon story, amen. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. The salmon returned from the ocean to the very gravel bed where they were hatched in order to reproduce before death. They swim for a total of a hundred, even thousand miles to their birthplace against the current. The spectacular part is that when they encounter a waterfall, they can jump seven feet. And they jump over that. Now sometimes they'll find higher waterfalls and they, they do some way a triple jump. I don't understand it, but I read they can do a triple jump and they'll get over that waterfall. Why am I telling you that story? Because listen, we Christians, we don't jump over any walls. We don't go against the current. If you're gonna be a soul winner, you're gonna be against the current in our society. But anyway, I like salmon. I trust you do too. I love salmon. And I eat them. I mean, listen, you know, my dad used to take me fishing. I was trying to figure out how many species of fish I know were different kinds. The other day, and I figured out at least 10 or 12 species of fishes that I know. 
I know, uh, I, you probably don't know the ling, but I've caught ling. Most of you don't know, it looks like a bull, a bull snake. Most of it has a big wide head and a big slender body. And we used to take them home and mom would clean them and bake them and we'd eat them and they were good. And they, had, they didn't have a lot of little bones, they had big bones. And I like boneless fish. <laughs> That's what I like. But I'm just telling you, listen, fishing, fishing, fishing. How many of you know the difference between a casting rod and a spinning rod? Okay, one, two, three, you know the difference between a casting rod and a spinning rod? Now, after I got off of that willow I made, my dad bought me a casting rod. Now, a casting rod is, has a reel on it that has an adjustment on the side. And you put your hooks, we would put weights on the bottom and two hooks, and then we would tighten that down. So when I went like this, I wouldn't get a backflash, the string all back in my reel, rolling back in my reel. And so I fished with a casting rod. I caught many of trout. My brother John and I used to have a contest to see who could cast out there the feathers. And uh, that was at uh, Metal Arc Lake in, in, in uh, above uh, Ten Sleep, Wyoming. Ten Sleeps was, there were Ten Sleeps from Fort Laramie to Ten Sleep, and they named it Ten Sleep because of the Ten Sleep. But I caught nice, this is a real fish story. <laughs> I caught nice German brown, rainbows. And, uh, but then one time after I, I heard there was a, what did I call it? Casting rod and a spinning rod. I bought, if I remember correctly, I bought my boys one. At least I bought Gene one. I can't remember whether I bought any for other. And they went fishing and they took that spinning rod and they went to the river and, and it was in the bushes on the other side of the river and that spinning rod because it would go so far. So I got me one and I went fishing with a spinning rod. <laughs> I, I like to fish, amen. I like to fish for souls. This last week I passed out at least three tracks. And so, you know, I like to go fishing. Did you hear about the preacher that took us two members deer hunting? He took two of his members and went deer hunting. And they got in their automobile and went up to some hunting grounds and they got out of the village, uh, vehicle, got their guns out. They were all standing there with their guns, and all of a sudden the deer jumped up. So they all three shot at the same time, bam, bam, bam. The deer fell over. So one of the members said, how are we gonna tell who shot this deer? Three of us shot at it. And the preacher said, well, I don't think we better try to solve it. It's too big of a problem for us. About that time, a game warden, warden drove up. <laughs> and so the, uh, the preacher said, you know, I uh, explained the situation to him and said, you know, uh, all three shot at this deer. Would you go over there and see which one you think got it? The preacher went over and looked at the deer. He came back. He said, the preacher got it. The members said, how do you know? He said, because it went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of hunting trips I like to go on anyway, where we have a little fun along the way. But I thank God, you know, listen, so number one, fish will pick up. Number two, fashions will change. Peter had him about a hundred dollar water repellent fishing coat, but he had it off and he was naked. That's what it says. Now, sorry to say, churches have lost most of them their conviction about dress. But I have a conviction about it. I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to be given a white robe, a long one. We're going to dress us in a white robe. But anyway, after I got saved, I went to a church and all the men wore suits and ties. All the ladies wore dresses down below their knees. And uh, there was a dress code. But we've lost that in our society, in our church. And a lot of times I think it's because maybe they're never taught or they never read. I read a book one time called Clothes Say What You Are by Dr. Rice's daughter. Clothes Say What You Are. Yeah. Now I don't believe you go to heaven by the way you dress. Right. But I believe that Adam took, God took Adam and Eve and they were with a little fig leaf and he made them a coat. Right. And that blood was a picture of the blood of Jesus Christ that they shed on those animals. So they were saved by the blood of a little animal, preaching the coming of Jesus Christ. 
But that coat he made him is called a coat of righteousness. A coat of righteousness. Isaiah talks about a coat of righteousness. I have a coat of righteousness upon that God gave me when I got saved. Amen. And so I say fashions will, will change. You know what? When I got saved, my lifestyles changed. My lifestyles changed. I mean, listen. Uh, I want to tell you, a harsh preacher sometimes I'd be careful about preaching these things. My TV became almost eliminated in my house when I first got saved. When I went to Bible college, I sold it. I gave it away, I don't remember which. It wasn't a big one, it was only about a 17 inch one back then. I got a, I got a smart TV now, I didn't buy it, it was given to me. It's got about 200 and some channels on it. And, but I don't find anything in there that they don't curse and swear on or they, 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 they dress improperly. And so my wife and I would sit down to watch it and we'll watch it and the program will get vile. And I'll say, turn it off. So we got us some tapes right, called the Virginian because they, on those, on those discs, because they don't cross, they don't swear. Amen. And we listen to those things, amen. Yeah. I love, I love uh, Matt Dillon and uh, what's the show? Bonanza? No, what's that? Anyway, I love Matt Dillon. I used to watch him all the yeah, time. And they've even started using smart word on there every once in a while. I can't believe it. But I'm saying fashions have changed. Uh, dress codes have been out the door. And I'm, I'm not doubting anybody. I'm just preaching the Bible. Amen. Amen. I preached the Bible one time and he told me, you're old-fashioned. I said, if I'm old-fashioned, the Bible's old-fashioned. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But I'm saying, listen, you know, the Bible says in Isaiah 61, 10, I will rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with a garment of salvation. He hath covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. Oh, listen, number two, when Jesus shows up, fashions will change. Will change. Peter out there, when he heard that Jesus there, he had that $100 uh, a fishing jacket on it was probably water repellent and it covered his body and he had it off when he heard Jesus was there he got his clothes on right. Amen. so I myself I know that people sometimes think I'm too strict and maybe I am but it's my strictness Amen. and I'm not down anybody I love everybody Amen. in fact this book, I said in this chapter, you can see the, you can see the fishing, the food, and the fondness. You'll see a love story. This chapter is based on a love story. And I want to say something about it just a little bit. But number three, when Jesus shows up, faith will increase. They caught nothing. And they thought, well, I can't catch fish. I can't do it. But along come Jesus and said, cast your net on the other side. And they got confidence to start catching fish again. Amen. I mean, for periods of times in my life, I didn't catch any fish. I was trying, but I didn't do it. But I, I read a new book about it. I got a new approach. Uh, a man came along, Doug Markle, some of you have heard me preach to her. And he gave me a line for soul winning that changed my soul winning when I started using it. And I use it now. And I have much more success at leading someone to Jesus Christ because of it. Amen? So I'm saying, listen, faith will increase. I thank God that through my 55 years of preaching, God has given me experience after experience after experience. You know what I did? It increased my faith. It increased my faith. It increased my faith. It increased my faith. And I'm still, the Bible says we ought to grow in grace and knowledge. And uh, one man said to Jesus, increase my faith. Another man said, help me of my unbelief. But listen, we need to increase our faith. Now, how do you do it? You get in the Bible, you go to church regularly, you tithe, you go soul winning, you pray, have a prayer life. First thing I pray every morning, one of the first things I pray is, Dear God, give me love. I love you, but you love me first. Love is missing in our lives today, in our homes. Love is missing. We ought to love one another, the Bible says. So I'm saying, listen, faith will increase when Jesus shows up. Amen? It will come. Number four. One, two, three, number four. Fire will come. Fire will come. 
Jesus built a fire of charcoal. And he has some fish and some bread on it. Wow, what a meal, fish and bread. And he has this, he has this fire. You know, uh, I, I've been in situations and I've been in churches where somehow God set that work or set that preaching or set that place on fire. Yeah. And people were getting saved and getting baptized. I mean, 10 on Sunday were getting saved and 12 of them were, 12 of them were getting baptized. <laughs> but Jesus wants to set us on fire. Most, in most cases, I'm tired, I'm old, I'm draggy. <laughs> I like to sleep in now. I used to get up every morning at 5, 5.30 and have a prayer time. I get up at 9 and have a prayer time now. <laughs> I mean, my body's changed, amen. I'll just admit I slowed down. But fire. Yeah. You know, Bobby Robertson built a great church. Yeah. He said because of his Saturday night prayer meeting where men sometimes would pray all night. He had that great church. Yeah. One time I called for an all-night prayer meeting. I was at a church and there were some problems. As I called for an all-night prayer meeting, I had probably about 10 people show up. Uh, one was my older son who was a preacher, and I can't remember about the others. I think uh, Colleen, my other daughter, was there. And then a fellow came that belonged to the church, and uh, some other people, about 10 of us there, were going to pray all night. We started about a quarter to nine, and we got down on the pews around different places and started praying. All of a sudden, there was a tap on my shoulder. One of the men said, I'm getting a terrific headache. I'm getting a bad headache. I've got to go, and he left. It must have been about an hour after we started praying. And another hour, and I <laughs> I went over and tapped him on the shoulder and I said, Sir, you probably better go home and go to bed. <laughs> now, when we got done in the morning, I think it was about four of us. My wife shaking her head, yes, so there were four of us. But I want you to know on Sunday morning, you had to open the doors. Power came. People were moved. People were convicted and convinced. One lady came to me who had been in that church all of her life and she didn't go through fight after fight after fight. She said, Pastor Di, you brought revival. Well, I said, ma'am, I never brought revival. God brought it. Amen. But I'm saying prayer. You know, I'm going to talk just a little bit about power in a minute, I hope. But anyway, food will come. You know, uh, I have one son that is a hamburger hot hog. I mean, all he wants is a hamburger. Every time he comes out, he wants to go to a lot of burger and get the biggest hamburger. Or go someplace where he gets the biggest hamburger. He, he eats, he's eaten hamburgers ever since he was a teenager. And he's still eating them. I have one daughter that didn't like hamburgers. She, she ate fish sandwiches. Now she's changed. And she eats hamburgers once in a while. But I'm saying, listen. Food. Food. God has, I've been... I've been here, you know, some 60, 61 years this month. I've been, I don't know, let's see. I've got to figure that. I had this figured out. But anyway, I've been saved 61 years, but I've been here uh, 80, 83 years. And I haven't missed one meal. Yeah. Unless we were fasting, unless something came up, right. emerging, so I haven't missed one meal. Look how fat I am. <laughs> <laughs> No, really, I'm losing weight now that I'm getting older. And, uh, but anyway, I want you to know food will come. Number six of what will happen when Jesus will appear, fault will stop. Verse 12, and Jesus said unto them, Come and dine, and none of his disciples just asking, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Come and dine. Fault will stop. I think these disciples had had a little fuss. They fished all night, and I'm sure one said, you got my part side of the boat, that's my side. Another one said, you know, uh, get over here, over here in this hole, this hole. Time's going by, isn't it? Let's just get going, but thought will stop. And number seven, focus will return. They knew it was Jesus. They said, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Number eight, fascination will never cease. 
I'm constantly fascinated at what God does for me and my wife and for my children and for uh, people that I know, what God does. I'm constantly fascinated. So I want to get down to the last point, number nine, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You'll notice that I use all these with F. Uh, I give them back to you here. Uh, they're all F. I get my other note picture. Number one was fishing will pick up. Number two, fashions will change. Number three, faith will increase. Number four, fire will come. Number five, food will come. Number six, fault will come. Number seven, focus will return. Number eight, fashion will cease. But this one here, fullness of the Holy Spirit. I want to stop there just a bit. I just read a book called uh, Deeper Experiences of Famous Christians in the Past. Dr. Curtis Hudson, Hudson recommended it when he was alive. So I ordered his little pock, pocket book, and it's called uh, uh, something about, I forget what it was now, so I'm getting old, see now, but anyway, uh, famous, uh, Deeper Experiences of Famous Christians, and I read that book. I couldn't believe what I read. I've never heard anything like that, never seen nothing like that. But I'm saying, listen, I believe we're shallow Christians. Right. I believe our churches have changed from being on fire to a, a more mellow uh, preaching and teaching and doing things. I believe that our churches are shallow. I believe that we Christians are shallow. Someone said, well, uh, you know, what are you, a deeper experienced Christian? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. I just want to be if I could get there. Yeah. But I think we need to be deeper. Mm -hmm. I say that's important. So yeah. I have this little thing here that I brought, and uh, it's kind of from that book. Did you know that Jesus didn't work one miracle until he was baptized with the Holy Spirit? He went to John to have John baptize him, and the dove came down, and the word that's used there, he was full of the Holy Spirit. See, I believe in a fullness, I believe in a filling, I believe in a measure, I believe in baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a fullness of the Holy Spirit, there's a measure of the, I can show you the verses if I had time, and then there is a filling, and then there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And somehow in our society and in most of our churches, we've lost what the baptism of the Holy Spirit is. Right. We've lost it. We, we, we refer to being filled, but there is a baptism of the Holy Spirit. I think I told you one time about one of my, one of my experiences. Jesus didn't work one miracle. He didn't preach till he got saved or got filled full of the Holy Ghost. And then he went out and fought the devil for 40 days. And he said to the devil every time, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. And he used the word of God, amen. So important you know the word of God so you have an answer. But I'm saying if we had spirit-filled Christians, if we had spirit-filled churches, if we had spirit-filled preachers, preachers, we would see the work of God done easier it would be easier to do it yeah. uh, samson the spirit of the lord came upon him saul david samuel gideon it said they were filled with the holy spirit and it says the spirit came up on them i believe that didn't dwell in the holy spirit i believe in the filling of the holy spirit, but i believe of the coming of the holy spirit upon you to do feats that you can't do right to accomplish things that you can't do now, how do you get it? Well, uh, I'll tell you what I believe. You get it? You tarry. Luke 24 talks about have been in do with the Holy Spirit. It talks about tarry. It means wait. It means wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Keep, keep pleading. Keep begging. And then over in Acts, it talks about the tarry for the Holy Spirit there in the book of Acts. In other words, we need to get down on our faces and pray through the night and ask for the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Dr. Jack Howes prayed four days on his dad's grave after he buried him. And he said his whole ministry was renewed and re, uh, reviewed 
He prayed for years out in the thicket pines in, in East Texas, Texas for the power of the Holy Spirit after he read a sermon on the sorrow of the Lord. And then one night he said it happened. He was preaching and all of a sudden the Spirit fell upon him and that church. And he said people got saved. They came crying. And a great miracle was worked because he got filled with the Spirit. So I just want to say that. And, you know, I'm going to close down here because I like to preach on time if I can. It's hard for me. I, I'm like Brother Wooden. He, he, I want to preach some more, Brother. <laughs> you know what? Listen. The Christians on Pentecost were filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a breath from heaven that we need today. Yeah. We need the thing that happened to Dwight L. Moody on Wall Street in New York when the power of God came upon him and he had to seek refuge in the home of a friend and ask God to hold his power until he could get alone. We need what came upon Peter Cartwright as he preached his first sermon and upon John Wesley as he had an all-night prayer meeting with 60 other preachers. We need to have the power that George Wheeler had when he saw Christians on their knees and he fell to his knees the first time and was given the power of God. We need to have the power that Christmas Evans had yeah. when he was thrown from his horse on his riding his circuit and the Holy Spirit came upon him. We need to have the power that Billy Sunday had when he would get up to preach and he would use Isaiah 61, one, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he yeah. would preach and he had revivals. We need those, uh, those experiences. We need the experience of George Fox, who fasted and prayed for 14 days and came, uh, and came back uh, with his face shining as if, he, if it's if, yes, if it were the face of heaven. Wow. Listen, you can call it what you will. Right. You can call it what you will. I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One time, I told you, one time I went, uh, I met with a deacon who we were going so in, and I had been praying every morning and fasting and asking for a soul. We got in the car all of a sudden it seemed like an umbrella opened. An, ember, an umbrella open came over us and down around us. Yeah. I had a baptism of the Holy Spirit that night. I don't think you need to look for those extra experiences, but I believe you can have them if you want them. Right. I believe God wants you to have power. One time I worked with a group of teens when I was in Bible college. Must have been about probably eight, ten teens. One of them was a football player on the football team of that town. He came in every Sunday morning. We had one of those six-foot tables or ten-foot, I remember, and we all sat around him, all the teens, and I sat on the end and taught. And this teenager would come in, pass gum under the table every Sunday morning to the other teens. So what did I do? I said, here's the trash bale, inspect your gum out. Oh, they got mad at me. I don't believe you can concentrate as well when you're chewing gum. Right. I don't chew gum in church. I chew it coming over here and then I spit it out before the church Amen. service. Because I can concentrate better. Now if you're chewing gum, it's all right. It's none of my business. It's your gum in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but then I got up. I, I had a fire in that house. I lived there. So I was a junior in college. And I went off to school one day. And, and the president of the college called me and said, your house is on fire. I said, what? So I got in my car and rushed out there. And sure enough, my kids was playing with matches. We had a birthday party. We left some matches and candles on the kitchen table. They took the candles and the matches and went in a closet with clothes hanging down. And they caught them clothes on fire. And then when they opened the door, it went, Phew! And we couldn't live in that house anymore. We had to move out. But I'm just saying, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm saying, listen, call it what you will. Oh, well, that night when I preached. Now, I don't remember what I preached on, but I preached on the deck of cars. I preached on the joker in there who's a picture of the devil. Huh. Oh, oh. <laughs> you never heard that, have you? Uh, yeah. I used to have a deck of trick cars. You could flip them one way and they were all aces of spades or something. You could flip them another way and they were a deck. And I carried those for a long time, but one time I finally threw them away. But I'm just saying, listen, we need, we need to be a, a dude with power. Yeah. And then three times, he said to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me more than these? Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know that I love you. But he used a weak word. He, he used the word phileo which is a weak word for love. And Jesus said, do you adopt me? Do you love me with a deep love? Yeah. Do you love me with a, with a deep love? 
Peter said, I'll follow oh, you. And then Jesus came back and said, I for that all you. And the Bible says Peter was grieved because Jesus came down to his lower form of love. Uh -huh. Isn't it wonderful how Jesus knows when we're weak and not lovely? Yeah, yeah. He knows that we need him, amen? Right. I thank him for loving me. I'm an unlovable person. Just ask Brother Guzman there. <laughs> I tease him all the time, but I'm, I'm done. I'm stopping because, you know, I like to get out in time, go home and get me a glass of water. I don't, I don't drink anymore. I quit drinking. <laughs> Did you hear about the two preachers that were having a discussion and one preacher said to the other, do you talk to yourself? That preacher would say, sure, especially when I want expert advice. Yeah. <laughs> so you can talk to yourself tonight if you want to. Brother, you come up and dismiss him here. Take my song here, too. talking about not all for the good. In fact, very few of them for the good. So thankful for that tonight. Let's stand together. May God speak to our hearts tonight. Father, we're thankful for what your man told us tonight. God, under the word of God, I think the Holy Spirit was moving and I pray he'd help us. God, that our desire would be that you would show up. God, not just in church. We're thankful when you do show up in church. God, I'm praying the Holy Ghost of God would show up very real in each one of our lives, even this very night. Tomorrow, God, I pray you take this message and, and heard it in our hearts, God, that this week and every day of our lives, that, that would be our desire that Jesus would show up. We're thankful for the reminder of these things that Pastor Dye told us tonight out of your word, these things that will happen when you show up. And Lord, I know it was just a short list of things that will happen when you show up, but God, I pray that at least these things would happen in our life every day as you show up. Speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As music plays tonight, if God spoke to your heart, would you come and use the altar tonight? Listen, everything he mentioned tonight was straight out of the Word of God. Someone asked me, do you like everything he said? No, I don't like everything he said, because a lot of it convicted me. But I'm very thankful for everything that he said. I'm not saying that disrespectfully. I'm just, the truth is, when the truth is spoken, I don't always like it, but I know it's always helpful. And I'm so thankful tonight for the preaching of the Word of God that reminds me when, when Jesus shows up, so here's the question tonight. When's the last time Jesus showed up in your life? Has he showed up recently? He wants to, by the way. That's why he said in Revelation, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice, will open to me, up unto me. I will enter and I will suck with him and he with me. Jesus wants that fellowship. That's why Jesus came to these guys out there on the boat. And that's why he prepared the food for them, because he wanted to show up very real in their lives. I've been so convicted. I'm glad he mentioned tonight about the change in his life years ago about soul winning because God has been burdening me so hard about soul winning, about becoming a soul winner that God would have us to be. And I'm praying that God will show up in my life in the area of soul winning. I'm praying that God will show up in your life in the area of soul winning. In the power of the Holy Spirit of God, church, how we need that. I've tried recently in the last year or two to teach on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want so bad for the Holy Spirit to show up. By the way, the Holy Spirit is as much God as Jesus is God. There is much God as God the Father is God. We need them to show up in our lives. When God shows up, these things will happen. I can't give each one of them, but as I read through them, I'll never forget when God shows up. Listen, it, it'll change your life. So let's beg Jesus to show up in our lives tonight, tomorrow, because we need that change. We need God in our lives. We're we're not all that, like Brother Murdoch used to say, we're not all that in a bag of Baptist chips. We need help in our lives. We need the power of God to change us. 
some of the men that he mentioned tonight about how that God showed how that the Holy Spirit got filled in their lives. We need those things. These guys that God used to change the world around them. They were really nothing special. They were men. They were humans like you and I that needed that power. Church, just pray that God show up. I want God to show up in our church, but the way He'll show up in our church is if He shows up in our individual lives. Let's pray that would happen in our lives. God will show up. Again, it's not something that asking out of the realm or anything weird, but because He wants to show up. Let's pray this week that God would show up in our lives. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Dye, for that. I appreciate it. it I forgot to tell you, we're done at 7.30. So you still, if you want to come back up, you got 20 more minutes. I know we can do it. You know we can do it as well. Uh, but thank you for that, Pastor. I appreciate that. And I apologize. I had, haven't had him preach as much as we need to. I don't want to overwork him, but I certainly want to have him preach more. Uh, I've had him preach quite often when I wasn't here. And it wasn't because I was afraid of it. I just it worked out that way. And I'm so glad to hear that tonight. That's a help. I've read, I've read that chapter of John a number of times didn't see a lot of that stuff in there, so I'm thankful for that tonight. Let's grab our hymn books, please. We're going to sing number 13. Number 13, we'll sing that on the way out. There's still some uh, cookies and whatnot left from yesterday. If you want to fellowship a while over that, if you got to get out, that's fine, but uh, there's some sweets here and some uh, get all sugared up and caffeined up for you to go home and not be able to go to bed. Enjoy each other's coffee before we leave tonight. Number 13. Number 13, on the way out.